In this video, I'm gonna be covering how to perfectly match up your audio and video recorder within Premiere Pro. I've seen a couple questions about this, and I just wanted to address it really quick in a video. My name's Javier Mercedes, and I love doing video tech tutorials and talking to inspiring people. If you like that kind of thing, don't forget to hit that subscribe, and let's dive right into it. Here within the project bin, I have three different camcorders that I need to sync to one audio recorder. To start off, I'm gonna create a new sequence by dragging one of my video files onto this little new sequence or new item button. Next, I'm going to bring my audio recorder files in here and make sure they're on separate tracks. I'm actually gonna bring my video down below the audio and move my audio up one. At this point, what I wanna do is automatically sync it within Premiere Pro, which is very easy. All you have to do is highlight all of your clips and make sure all of your clips have their own separate track. I'm going to right click, go to synchronized, and you want to synchronize by audio. Hit okay. And there, Premiere Pro has automatically synced your video files to your audio recorder. You could leave the files like that if they sound okay, but the point of this tutorial is to exactly match up your audio recorder with your video recorder. First off, if you want your audio waveforms to look like mine, how they're centered like this, as opposed to the other way, all you have to do is go up to this little menu icon for the sequence. You would do rectified audio waveforms. Now this is what Premiere Pro has as default, but I like looking at my waveforms there in the center. Now let's find fine tune the syncing of these audio waveforms to the video waveforms. As you can see, the audio waveform from this camera starts before my audio recorder, and this is after I've already sunk it. So to fine tune this, all we have to do is go up to that same sequence menu, click these little three bars, and we're going to hit this option right here, show audio time units. Up here on your timeline has now switched over to audio time units and your audio time units are going to be bound by what your sampling rate is in the sequence. And what that means is cameras go by frames. How many frames per second? That means they can only move in units of frames. So you are bound by 24 frames per second or the 23.976, 30 frames, 60 frames, 120. You can only move those clips within those little units. What's awesome about audio time units is instead of being bound by 24, 60, 30, 120, now you have the option of 48,000 samples per second. That is a big difference between how many frames there are and how many samples. That's because with an audio recorder, you're bound by the sampling rate. So right now, if you were to go to your sequence settings, for me, my sequence has 48,000 hertz. And that means there's 48,000 of these notches per second, which is mind-blowing when you think about it in comparison of frames per second. And just to drive this point across, look right here on your timeline. If you were to cross the 48,000 number mark on your samples right here, that's when this is gonna switch over to 27 seconds instead of 26. Let me scroll and watch this. Right when it hits 48, it'll switch over to 27. Boom. See that? So there are 48,000 units per second in this timeline. Another common sampling rate that you'll run into is 44.1 kilohertz. So that's 44,100 hertz. That comes from the days of CDs. So if you were ever listening to a CD, those were played back at a sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz. Back to this. Since I have a very clear attack transient, and what I mean by attack transient is, is the start of a waveform, the attack. I'm going to move my cursor to the very start of the waveform. So now we can take our razor tool and cut at the exact spot where the waveform starts. Go back to my selection tool, and let's move these audio waveforms into perfect sync with this top camera angle right here. I just wanna point out quickly that you should be moving the waveforms from the audio recorder, not the waveforms that are connected or linked to your video because those are still bound by frames and they won't move properly. Looks like we have the dip in the audio waveform on this camera and going to move it just a little bit into the right spot. And that looks about right. At this point, I don't want to confuse people and I don't want to get too far into particulars with multi-camera sequencing within Premiere Pro. I'll save that for another tutorial another day. So I'm going to delete my two other camera angles and just stick to simply my audio recorder here on the top and this video file that we've been working with. There's one problem that we need to address before we move on in this edit. And that has to do with switching back from audio time units to frames per second. So I'm going to delete these two just to showcase what I mean. I'm going to go back up here, go turn off my show audio time units and notice how it won't 
let me snap my audio to a frame. It's always compensating by how far away this little space is from this frame, which that could lead to a lot of trouble down the line when you're moving a whole bunch of files. So if I were to move this audio all around and then all of a sudden it doesn't snap to a frame hash mark, it's still trying to snap to samples. So what we want to do before we do all of our editing in this project is I want to go back up here and I'm going to go to show audio time units. And with my cursor on a frame, leave your cursor right there, drag your audio to snap to your playhead. And if it doesn't snap, make sure that snap and timeline is on. And now if I go back to turning your audio time units off, whenever you move this, it will move perfectly to any of the frames on your timeline. The last step would be to unlink the audio and the video clip from each other. So unlink, delete your bottom file. Now I'm going to highlight my good audio from the recorder and my video clip and link and voila. They are paired with each other and you are ready to rock and roll with this edit. If this tutorial was helpful in any way, please leave me a message down in the comment section saying, hey, it helped me out or thanks, man. Those really brighten up my day and lets me know that the content that I'm putting out is worth it to you guys and gals out there. Love my fellow video editors. This video is a part of a whole audio within Premiere Pro playlist. So if you want to check out some other videos where I talk about audio editing within Premiere Pro, they're probably on the screen right now. And until next episode, my name's Javier Mercedes and and, you know, go ahead and go out there and live a life of abundance.